All right, we're going to start our topic four of rad safety, which is personnel protection, which is protecting you, the technologist. Uh, just sort of an outline of what we're going to go through today. Cardinal rules, sources, scatter, shielding requirements, room design, um, exposure monitor monitoring, dose limits, dosimeter types, uh, the report you get, and then handing radioactive materials. So our first section is about cardinal rules, and I know you know all of these, um, but so as an occupational worker, it's important to keep radiation to yourself as a min at a minimum, not only to your patients. So time distance shielding are three cardinal rules. And so keeping your time that you're exposed to radiation as short as possible is really important. Um, the easiest way to reduce um, your dose is to increase your distance. It's the easiest one. All you do is step backwards. So if you can increase your distance from the source when you're in the fluoroscopy room, try and tuck behind the radiologist. If you are in the OR, um, try and take a step back and use the remote if you can. And then shielding, protecting yourself with shielding whenever possible, wearing your lead correctly and placing your radiation badge outside your lead up at the collar and make sure your lead has been tested and then it actually fits you. If it's hanging off, or if it's too big or if it's too small, then it's not the right choice. So one that fits you is important. Sources of radiation for basic um, primary beam is the beam that exits the tube, connects with the patient, right? Exit beam is what goes through the patient towards the detector. Scatter radiation, when it, that beam hits the patient and scatters in a different direction. And as technologists, that is the source of most of our dose, okay? Leakage radiation is something that's actually rare. It, it doesn't really happen um, often. It's leakage from inside the x-ray tube. There is a maximum um, allowance for leakage. So this one um, milligray A per hour at one meter, and that would have to be measured. Um, don't confuse off-focus radiation with leakage radiation. So remember off-focus radiation is um, radiation that hits outside the focal track. Leakage is actually leaking out of the tube. All right, sources to exposure. So we know we just talked about it and you guys already know this, but our main dose is from Compton interactions with the patient. The areas where you're gonna get your greatest exposure is gonna be fluoroscopy, portables, and the OR, so your surgical rotations. That is when we are closest to not only the patient, but the X-ray source. Um, the scattered beam intensity reduces to about 1 1,000th of the intensity when it's at a 90 degree angle and one meter away from the patient. So if you're ever asked the area of least scatter, it's at a 90 degree angle from the patient. Exposure can be found by um, are measured by multiplying exposure rate times exposure time. All right, so here's an image, and you may be given this image or an image similar to this, and you have to identify the area with the least scatter. And so where this patient is, 90 degrees from this patient over here is actually the least intensity. If you can see sort of the scattering beam is not as far. We're out in these directions. It's scattering much farther. So this is the least. This is in the fluoroscopy room. Okay, so here's the dose, here's the protective curtain, here's where your radiologist should stand, and then you should be right behind them. So this is your um, kind of lowest dose area. Okay, scatter radiation. So if you increase or decrease some factors, it will either increase or decrease scatter. Um, increasing KVP, which is, remember, increasing quality of the beam or energy or penetrability, those all go with KVP, your scatter is going to increase. Increasing your field of view, and when I say increasing field of view, I mean making your light field larger. That is going to increase your scatter. Why do we want a big light? We don't want a big light, we want a small light. I want you to increase your collimation. I want you to make a smaller field size cone right in nicely to that part. You're going to decrease your scatter, and your image is going to be nice, so nice and pretty. All right, increase in patient size. Your obese patient, you're going to have a lot more scatter radiation, which is why collimation is still important. Using the correct IR size, don't go to a big size just because you have a big patient. Their bones are not any bigger. Keep it small. 
All right, control scatter with C-arm. Knowing where your x-ray source is versus your image intensifier is important. Ideally, the source is underneath the patient on the table and the image intensifier is above it because where the x-ray source hits the patient, the greater scattering is gonna be on the x-ray source side versus the image intensifier side. So this is the exit radiation here, okay, versus this one where they flipped it. The x-ray source is now up top. Look at the intensity up top versus down bottom. And again, this is just another sort of side version of it. Um, the top one has the x-ray tube down bottom, and this one has the x-ray tube up top, so it'll kind of reverse where your dosages are. Portable and fluoroscopy protection, um, just some terms to know. So. The exposure switch on a portable must be on a cord that can reach up to six feet or 1.8 meters, because if your boards are in meters, I want you to know that number. And it has to be a dead man type switch um, that goes for your fluoro controls or your C-arm controls. They're all a dead man switch, which means they're going to put their foot on it and it's going to expose. But as soon as they let off it, if there's no pressure on it, there's not going to be any exposure happening. So if no one's touching it, then it's just on standby. But um, so foot pedal for C-arm, foot pedal for fluoro, and um, those are all going to be the dead man switch.